G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, market cap is down and a correction is obviously happening and I'm starting to think I may have uh, been a little bit too excited a little bit too early uh, and this possibly is going to go uh, a little bit lower than what I thought. So currently we're behind that 13,500 uh, and just really waiting to see exactly where it's going to find a bottom. You know, the election is upon us. I think some people are probably spooked and so there's a bit of a sell-off. But also, we've had a pretty good run over the last sort of couple of months. Gas prices come down again, 25, not too bad. BTC uh, dominance is still rising though again. So it's getting up close to 63% now. I still expect it to get to 65 and maybe even up to 75%. Although I think 75% might be on the high side. But, you know, we'll have to wait and see. There are some, you know, stories that we'll have a look at that may sort of suggest that 75% will be... Uh, fairly easy. Let's have a look. Who's the biggest gainers? No one really. Single digit gainers, uh, you know, anything's better than nothing, but really not a whole lot there. But let's have a look at the losers. I'm going to say there might be a couple of reasonable losers. Yep, Synthetics Network absolutely killed me. So I thought it was a good time to get in uh, and it's dropped a bit, although I got in, you know, I think I've only lost about 9% at the moment. So I haven't taken all of this and I am still hoping that it has found a bottom. Uh, or at least is very close to it. But, you know, who knows? I could be wrong, but I am I still believe in Synthetics Network, and I think in the long run I'll be just fine. Uh, REN, so going down, uh, reserve token. So we see some reasonable sort of losses there, and it's more over the seven days. Like uh, altcoins have really been bleeding off, uh, and they've dropped uh, quite a substantial amount, anywhere from 60 to maybe even up to 70 80%, some of them. And generally, that's the range where they will uh, drop. If they're going to have a heavy correction, it can be that uh, kind of, you know, area. But again, it could be anywhere between 65 to sort of 85. You know, it's unlikely that they're going to go to 90 plus percent unless the project is kind of dead and there's just really bad news. This is just your standard kind of, you know, correction in a cycle. So, you know, I'm hopeful and somewhat confident that Synthetics Network isn't going to drop too much lower. It, look, it could go a little bit lower, but, uh, you know, a dollar thirty is kind of where I'm really going to be worried. If this gets down to a dollar thirty, uh, as long as it bounces from around a dollar thirty, I won't be too worried. But if it goes below a dollar thirty, then I will be uh, really worried for the Synthetics Network uh, platform. But again, I don't think that's going to happen. Anyway, let's move on. Let's get to some of these uh, stories. And this is what makes me think that 75% uh, BTC dominance probably isn't uh, too out of the question. So PayPal crypto services to go global early uh, in 2021. And we know the uh, cryptos that they're going to use. So it's Litecoin, Ethereum, I think Ethereum Classic, and Bitcoin. Bitcoin is going to be the one that most people are going to get into. This is going to be huge. They're, they're a massive market. You know, their Venmo app's getting in on it as well. So I think, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if Bitcoin gets up to a 75% uh, dominance, uh, possibly even more next year. Again, you know, most people who don't know too much about crypto but start using it through PayPal and Venmo and that, they're only going to have a few options. But something uh, that excites me outside of just Bitcoin is Litecoin. Now, there hasn't been a whole lot of development going on with Litecoin, but they've got Mimble Wimble coming out, but they're also being adopted and they've been, you know, basically deemed uh, an allowable cryptocurrency for banks to hold. So Ethereum, Bitcoin, Litecoin, uh, I'm super bullish on all of those. And I think people will start with Bitcoin and then they'll obviously see that Litecoin's a whole lot cheaper and so they'll naturally start to buy into Litecoin. So I think uh, Litecoin is going to do extremely well. Even though it hasn't had too much news, it's basically Bitcoin, but a little bit faster and there's more of them. Not, not quite, not exactly. Uh, and, you know, Bitcoin maximalists will bloody crucify me for saying that. But really, that's what it is. It's a fork of, uh, you know, sort of, Bitcoin, or not a fork, uh, a copy of Bitcoin. And again, people won't like that, but it's a good copy. I like Bitcoin. I like what uh, Lee has done with it. Uh, and it's a lot faster and there'll be a use case for it. And the fact that it's regulated uh, is exactly why it's going to be used. So I am super bullish. Uh, and yes, CBDCs, you know, they're going to be the, the mainstay. Everyone's going to get into uh, those. I'm not saying they're going to be great. They're basically just fiat in a digital version. They'll still have all the same problems, but they will be transferable 
uh, and things like that. So, you know, digital, an easier way to carry cash and things like that. But this is what makes me think that B, uh, Bitcoin could go to 75% dominance, maybe even higher. Look, who knows? But, you know, over time, I think it'll start to come back down. People will start to look for alternatives. And when Bitcoin isn't, you know, producing the kind of gains that other coins are, that's when people naturally move into other coins. It doesn't mean Bitcoin's no good, but at some time, at some stage in the future, the volatility is going to be less for Bitcoin. It's going to act more like our regular sort of stocks, although that's still maybe a decade away. All right, another reason. So Venezuela, they are going to incorporate incorporate Bitcoin and Litecoin wallets into their national remittance platforms. So Venezuela also already has one of the highest adoption rates for cryptocurrencies in the world. Uh, they have massive problems with uh, hyperinflation with their money and that. And so people have naturally moved to Bitcoin and Litecoin and now uh, they've just incorporated into you know their national remittance platform. So again, another reason why I'm I think you know Bitcoin definitely has a chance to go to 75% dominance or more, although I think it's unlikely. I think it'll be sort of somewhere more around the 65 to 70%. Time will tell. I could be wrong. Uh, and again, Litecoin. This is what is making me bullish about Litecoin. I have a bag of Litecoin and I am now starting to consider whether I should buy more. Uh, banks are going to take custody of Litecoin. You know, there's, you know, Litecoin adoption. There's uh, talk of uh, Litecoin and Cardano teaming up and you know being cross compatible and all the rest of it So I'm starting to think Litecoin is going to be a pretty good buy and I may start to buy some more You know, I've only got so much money and I can only invest in so many things and I already have a position in Litecoin But I'm starting to think maybe I should get some more Now last but not least for, for this anyway for the stories So the court filing accuses BitMEX co-founders of looting 440 million before the Fed crackdown so basically this story says that it sounds like these guys got wind uh, that you know they were going to be investigated and people were coming after them. And Arthur Hayes, he got, what was that, uh, $139 million worth of Bitcoin, uh, well not Bitcoin, but funds. Benjamin Delco did the same, Samuel Reed did the same, and then Sean O'Sullivan uh, has got $22 million. So $440 million of funds, they snafu'd when they got wind that they were going to be investigated. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see what happens here. Uh, yeah, my gut feeling is these guys are going to be caught just like, oh God, what's his name? John McAfee uh, and eventually face charges and, you know, what happens with their funds after that? You know, it's really hard to say, you know, and it is possible, particularly if they have them in Bitcoin and that, that, you know, Maybe they go to jail for a really, really long time and don't ever see daylight again and those Bitcoin just completely disappear and, you know, all sorts of things. I'm not saying that is going to happen, but uh, very, very interesting. And I think these guys are going to be uh, in a reasonable amount of trouble and are probably going to serve some somewhat serious jail time. Now, I don't know these guys personally. I don't know the full backstory of it, so I've got nothing against them, uh, but it doesn't look good for them. I don't wish them any harm or anything like that. But just, you know, from all the news and stuff that's going on and the crackdowns, it does feel like they may find themselves in some fairly serious trouble. So, yeah, how they go about dealing with that, I don't know. And, you know, are they on the run and now hiding and all the rest of it? And, you know, the world is a place now where it's just very hard to hide. There's almost nowhere you can go really where, you know, you won't be found. I'm not saying it's completely impossible, but it's not easy, you know, you'd have to live like some kind of recluse out in the bush and almost never be seen again. And, you know, that's not exactly a life for everybody. Some people could do it and others uh, would just completely hate it. All right, let's go and have a look at the chart. So synthetics are on against Bitcoin. So it did drop down. It was sort of up around here. It's gone down lower. And I am hoping that it kind of hangs somewhere in and around here. So it definitely could drop down more but I'm hoping it finds some support here. It's already had a fairly deep correction, so we can go from here all the way down to here. So it's already a 71% correction against Bitcoin. So again, generally sort of 75%, maybe 80, you know, 5%, it could do as well. So it could go another 10%. So we get down to 85%. I mean, that comes way down to here, so that is pretty scary. Uh, I'm hoping that it doesn't do that. 
but look anything's possible if we have a look at it against the usd chart we can see that uh 75 percent retracement gets it down to around about a dollar a dollar thirty i was thinking it would find some support at two dollars sixty it's broken through but we'll just have to wait and see if it will hold and it may well bounce off here or it may go lower and again down to this 75 percent mark or sorry come down to here this is 85 percent basically right down here so around about a dollar thirty now that's really going to hurt uh for me buying here at a dollar thirty but again i think it won't be too big of an ask that at the peak of the next bull run it doesn't make it back up to here and go beyond that so again i'm an investor i don't worry about the short-term stuff i don't you know think that i can pick the market timings exactly so i was just hoping uh, that this would be a bounce point bought a position and look i may be wrong and then it comes down to a roundabout sort of here here and then bounces so be it if it bounces from here and then you know goes back up to you know eight dollars and then goes ten twenty dollars thirty dollars you know whatever it may be at the peak of the next bull run then it won't have mattered anyway i don't have to time things exactly uh, i can just be thereabouts and again, you know, I bought it sort of two dollars sixty. If it goes down to a dollar thirty, then you know I've lost, you know, a dollar thirty per coin uh, in the short term. But again, if it then goes from a dollar thirty up to ten dollars or you know whatever, from two dollars sixty, I'll have five x my money if it gets to ten dollars and goes back. So I'm always thinking about the long term, not the short term. You know, I'm I'm not a day trader i do a bit of swing trading and that's what this was i was thinking all right this has hopefully found its bottom uh, and is then going to find its way back up and this really does feel like sort of capitulation right here but look i could be wrong and maybe it goes to a dollar thirty a dollar thirty is 85 percent and then we go back to the bitcoin 85 percent uh, again gets back down to here we'll see now one that really uh is worrying me a little bit uh, is ethereum well a lot of things are worrying me a little bit at the moment but again this is more short-term stuff not long-term stuff ethereum broke through this trend line so i didn't think it was going to happen but it has happened now the day is not over it hasn't closed yet it still could close above here so this could be a bit of a fake out we can see that wicks have gone down before but i am somewhat concerned that this is going to roll over and then we're possibly going to come down to here around about the 240 dollar mark but again, at $240, it just means uh, a better chance to buy in cheaper. Now, the reason I think that this might happen is we go over to Bitcoin. Now, I'm on the monthly here. I'm not on the dailies and weeklies and all the rest of it. We can see that Bitcoin tested its old all-time high for candle closes. And true to uh, you know how it usually behaves, it's had a correction. So I am thinking that Bitcoin now may possibly come down uh, and re sort of test this twelve and a half thousand dollar level not guaranteed this still could change this is a monthly so it's very early in the month it's third of november you know this could easily change and there is a chance that once the election is done and dusted by the end of the week and you know there's talk of new stimulus packages and all the rest of it that everything starts to shoot back up again but you know you have to anticipate that it could go lower as well and so it wouldn't surprise me if it comes back down uh, and test this twelve and a half thousand dollar level it's not uh, out of the realms i just think it's more unlikely than it is likely now the reason i think uh, it could come back uh, and test uh, this is just that it is a su uh, support level but there is a possibility it may maybe comes back down and test this so this would be pretty scary eleven thousand sort of six hundred but that's what it does you can see a lot of the times that it's uh got to now candle closes these candle closes are very close to this one and these candle closes are very close to these ones over here not exact it doesn't have to be exact but they're just there about so uh, a lot of the time they yeah we'll find old support and resistance and that and around about that area will again you know bounce from there whether it's bouncing from the downside and going back up or bouncing from the upside and then going back down so we can see here uh, we hit this low and then it came up and basically hit old points of sort of support and resistance uh, and sold off came up here very close to uh, some other key areas so it had been here before been here before over here sold off and then came up 
and then again we get to here and you know it, this was a spinning top so it was undecided these are always worrying when you see these that the market could go either way and it sold off so I just think it's quite possible that this sells off comes down uh, and retests this mark or maybe even more this mark so eleven thousand sort of six hundred eleven thousand seven hundred dollars possible uh, I don't think it's likely I think once the elections are done and dusted and there's more talk of stimulus all markets are going to correct uh, and start to go back up but look I've been wrong before and I could be wrong again uh, time will tell but again Whenever I get too worried about things, I you know look on the the longer term because the short term stuff that's really hard to pick. Longer term is a lot easier. This is what Bitcoin's done since two thousand. This was two thousand and eleven, so it obviously had a sell off, uh, and it was I can guarantee you back in two thousand nine it was probably a lot lower than what it was there. It was uh, pennies worth, you know, just cents. So it was down here and traded up sold off traded up sold off traded up had a bit of sell off but that's what it does it basically just has these run-ups sells off has these run-ups sells off has these run-ups sells off but it just keeps moving up in the longer term so that's why i'm not too worried if it did come down and test this eleven and a half thousand dollars long term it's still going to play out the same way it's going to go up it's just the short term that uh is possibly going to hurt uh, people but I've been in the game for a while a few years now I've never actually sold any crypto I've never cashed out not that I have all that much crypto I've got you know what I can afford I'm definitely no millionaire uh, not even remotely close to that not even a quarter of a million dollars <laughs> that'd still be uh, an absolute miracle I'm not even anywhere near that so you know a long way off but at the end of the next cycle if I can you know I've tr uh, tripled my money or um, you know even more 5x 10x my money then I'll be sitting pretty uh, and you know I'll prepare myself for the next cycle uh, and again I'm, I'm looking to you know take some of those profits and diversify uh, I like crypto I'll continue to invest in crypto but property is something I'd like to get into uh, and maybe even some arts uh, you know you buy the right kind of uh, things in the art world and over time they obviously appreciate as well but Again, I don't know enough about art at the moment, but it's just something I'm thinking about looking into in the future. All right, I'm not going to take up any more of your time. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on that gain train at the moment, but long term, I'm sure we're all going to be fine. Personal advice, not financial advice. All right, I'll see you next time.